Hey guys, what's up? It's 8 Eric. Today we are going to talk about Dragon's Dogma on the Nintendo Switch. This actually came out the other day and what caught my attention to it is that it looks like something that is along the lines of what Skyrim might be. And I know what that saying with that statement some people that are dragon's dogma fans and skyrim fans are probably losing their shit telling me these games are nothing alike again it's just first impression so i really wanted to try to sink my teeth into dragon's dogma and see if it was worth checking out especially since it was available on physical format for the nintendo switch so today we're gonna find out is dragon's dogma the dark horizon worth buying for your nintendo switch so if you're brand new to the channel feel free to throw a subscription and let's go ahead and begin today's video So Dragon's Dogma Dark Horizon is actually a port of a previously released game, Dragon's Dogma Dark Horizon, I believe was an expansion pass or an update that came out not too long ago for the game. This is a six years old game, so it is a port of a game that has been out for quite some time. I did not get the opportunity to try it out to even know anything about it. I haven't played the game one time. So going into this review, I was completely blind to Dragon's Dogma. This was my first time experiencing the series. All I know about it is the comparison that I made that it looks a lot like Skyrim, and that's not wrong. It's an open world adventure type of game where you play as a character that has some kind of special thing about them that is, they're called the Arisen. So they're like the chosen one. Kind of sounds like the Dragonborn, you know. So there's a lot of comparison with Skyrim. And just like other adventure games like this, you make your way from quest to quest throughout the map and it was actually pretty impressive you know what surprised me is that going in i thought okay the game is only 29.99 physically for the nintendo switch there can't be much to it this game was much more bigger than i anticipated and in fact it was very big lots of exploration elements lots of freedom basically once you get past the initial opening part of the game you actually get to your character you can customize them and create them to the way that you see fit and then you're thrown out into the world it introduces you to a couple of areas that you're going to be traversing quite a bit but other than that you are free to go so i spent a lot of this time just wandering the map seeing what i can find you know different caves to explore you're going inside of wells going you know any in which way you know without going to the campaign i just always happen to do that in games like this i always end up doing the side missions and stuff first and i gotta say this game was really hard there was a point to where i was like wow i can't do anything or go anywhere and uh, to be completely honest a lot of the side missions and stuff that you try to do first without going to the beginning of the campaign leads you to really tough enemies so <laughs> i learned the hard way that you can't really hack and slash your way to uh to advance to get different stuff like that because it is very difficult so i went ahead and went back to the main campaign and stuff i'm not going to go into details of spoilers or anything like that don't want to talk about the story i did play a few hours of this it's a game that does require a lot of gameplay a lot of grinding a lot of you know just basically what skyrim entailed and games like xenoblade and stuff so this is a very immersive and huge time wasting game and it's a great solo campaign game which is what attracted my attention to it the most in regards to a game for the nintendo switch you really don't have many of those you know good single player campaigns that just you could sink a lot of hours into outside of skyrim breath of the wild and uh, xenoblade so to pick up one that is only 29.99 is what attracted my attention this most now the graphics you can't go home and write about them in here it's clearly a little outdated especially with the models and the facial expressions and just the voice acting and just the detail of everything in the environment you can tell that this was a port of a really old game and i think it's actually not that outdated it actually feels like it plays a lot better than skyrim might in way of combat in combat you're actually able to roam free and you even have sidekicks with you you know people that actually accompany you that help you 
battle in combat. You know, the main gameplay mechanic behind this is that you can actually recruit up to three other people to be in your party. You go to like a little area where it's like a, another like secret realm to like find them or you can find them in the in the wild and you can just kind of switch and based on your level of experience and everything is how strong your fighters can be. They can be everything from like mages to fighters to like different types of genres of characters in your party. So it's always wise to kind of just keep up to date with who you have in your party make sure they're equipped properly and everything because they do come in handy you know it took me a while to understand that and i do feel the combat mechanics and everything in this game are much more solid much more precise than skyrim itself felt the loss felt also a lot less glitchy than skyrim and skyrim is probably like my most one of my most favorite games of all time so needless to say i might have been unfairly comparing it to skyrim since my initial impression of the game and i know i keep talking about it and referencing to it but honestly you think of some other games that are similar like the witcher you know and other open world games such as those and i think dragon's dogma holds up sure it's a six-year-old game but you know this is my first time ever even checking it out if i wouldn't even known it was that old i honestly wouldn't have even been able to tell i think it's a quality port on the nintendo switch and i was thoroughly impressed with what I had and I, I know I'm not speaking in much of specifics or how it performs or anything like that and you know again it ran smooth as silk smooth as a baby's butt on the Nintendo Switch other than the obvious that it is an older looking game based on the detail and everything there was no problem with how the game ran no crashing no frame rates the controls everything of it felt silky smooth it was very impressive so i gotta give props to capcom for bringing this game over to the nintendo switch library a great game that you know i'm probably not the only one that has missed out on playing it but now that it's out on the nintendo switch i get to experience it for the first time so i think that's not a bad thing that's a good thing and, and, and that's what, honestly, I really enjoy about getting to play games like this. You know, Dragon's Dogma, I'm not a big RPG guy. And, you know, initial side, if I would have looked at just the box cover art, I probably wouldn't have given this game a chance. But after taking a look at the trailer and seeing some of my friends buy this game, I thought I had to sink my teeth into it. And I'm actually really glad that I did. So I was really impressed with Dragon's Dogma again. I have had no prior experience to playing it at all. So going in, I, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was going to be a game that was not as solid as some of the other adventure games we saw. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that I was completely wrong. I do think for the price alone and for it being available physically, that it is definitely worth taking a look at. You know, getting this game, picking it up, sinking the hours in. Um, there's definitely more than enough content here for your buck. I mean, this, if you ever wanted to get a title from the Nintendo Switch that would not break the bank, I think Dragon's Dogma is a heavy contender for that game. You can't beat that. $29.99 is a fair price for a physical game. And yeah, I, I'm really sinking my teeth into this. I'm actually going to consider doing some live streams about it. Again, it is very grind heavy. Uh, and games like that, I feel, aren't really good to live stream. But there's just something about some of these games that I feel might be interesting to check out and this one i feel has a lot of potential and a lot of stuff left into it so yeah again i've only played a few hours i haven't completed it but just just off of my first initial impression the first hours i've played of it i was definitely impressed about it you know going in blind not knowing anything about it definitely 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 very happy with this purchase so so far i would say it's probably a good solid 7.5 on that scale it's really well done and impressive and capcom you know thank you for bringing more games over to the nintendo switch and i guess i'm going to go ahead and end today's review with that guys thanks a lot for watching as always if you are brand new to the channel feel free to throw a subscription and don't forget to comment have you played this game before is it something that you would really like to um praise me down below maybe give me some advice or some tips and tricks and everything like that because i've had a lot of hard time killing some bad enemies and stuff in this game and it seems like i just die way too easily i would like some help if possible and don't forget to like or dislike you know what i mean just engage because i love you guys and i will see you on the next one guys thanks a lot for watching have a great day peace out Consider supporting 8-Bit Eric on Patreon for just a dollar a month. Link below in the description.